Hi everyone. So we will be discussing pivot tables and timelines and slicers and how to improve our data presentation using the pivot chart as well dito sa video na to. So if you are new to this channel, you can subscribe for more content about tech techniques, software skills and such. Pwede kayo mag uh, subscribe, hit the noti notification bell kung gusto niyo notify sa mga susunod pa natin lessons. We have a full Excel playlist. And part na doon yung ating pivot table, pivot table basics. So, if bago siya sa iyong paningin, you can try to watch that first before we delve into this. Kasi mas, mas more advanced itong ating pag-uusapan this time. So, I'm Coach Hobby and um, thank you for joining me on this learning journey. So, pivot tables, timelines, and slicers. This is kapag meron na tayong pivot table and gusto natin siya i-present in such a way na yung gagamit ng data, pwede niyang madaling i-modify kung paano yung kung anong gusto ng data niya lumabas to drill down on the facts. And uh, it's also a way para hindi na natin kailangan i-modify from time to time or gumawa na several versions of the same pivot table just so madali siya mabasa ng user natin. So make it more interactive and visual as well. So, if we have here our sample data, I will show you. We already have our data here. And we have a simple pivot table. So, pivot tables will summarize yung data na nandito in terms of kung depende kung paano mo siya, siya gustong i-present. If I want to present it by team or per month or per day, depende na yon sa akin. Uh, in this case, uh, looking forward, gusto ko kasi i-present yung aking data na Pwede ko siya i-subdivide ng performance niya per week or per month or per, per day. Um, to do that, una sa lahat, gawin muna natin magdagdag tayo ng dalawang columns dito sa ating data. Yung week kasi, there is no automatic calculation yet sa breakdown ng weeks kapag nag-pivot chart tayo. Kasi nga, um, hindi naman siya often used, siya it moves around a little bit. So, let's manually create a week. Para mag-subdivide natin siya depende sa week. And the formula is equals to week num, or number of the week, uh, out of the 52 weeks sa isang taon. So, lagyan na natin yung date here. And if I close that, you can see um, if I change it, make sure na naka-general naka yung ating um, value. Ibig sabihin, yung February 1 ay 6th week of the year. So we have our week number, and then we if we want the weekday, hindi natin gamitin na formula na iba except text na lang para madale text, and then we select our date comma. How do we want the text to appear? So if I put in day, as in D lang tatlo, and I close yung ating quotation and then the parentheses, it will show yung weekdays pero spelled out lang siya with three letters. If I want the whole word. All I need to do is add another D, so apat na D, and it will spell out the whole word for me. So I can, I can just click and drag or copy paste that formula pa baba. You can see na it's showing yung ating weekday as well. So now that we have our data ready, I will just go to my pivot table and um, make sure na naka-include hanggang sa ating column G. And now that we have that, we can proceed with our creation of the pivot chart. Now, if I want to present my data na mas visual, I can just go to Pivot Table Analyze, click on Tools, and click on Pivot Chart. What it does is it opens a dialog box so I can choose kung anong type na presentation ng data. So, there are different ways to present your data depende sa kung paano mo siya mag gusto mag-appear. Sa akin, in my case, I will just use clustered column kasi we have several columns ng data. Meron tayong volume, meron tayong error, meron tayong percent performance. You can see here yung blue, yun daw ang kanyang sum of volume. Yung orange is sum of errors. And yung per, uh, percent performance natin ay gray. But you can see here, hindi masyadong kita yung gray. Kasi, um, in terms of the axis natin, di ba? Kasi ang percentage is less than 1. Eh, eh yung intervals natin, 0, 5,000, 10,000. So, talagang hindi na siya makikita. So, if I want it to appear, para yung percent performance yung pinaka-aangat, I can just pinaka shortest way to do that is to actually just right click here move natin sa report filter yung ating sum of volume and errors para ang kita lang is yung performance and you can see nag automatic naman na nag-adjust yung ating axis para mas visual hanggang sa 62% yung ating threshold so in this case visually kita ko na ngayon yan, yan kung ano yung 
yung aking percent performance, I can move on and subdivide this data. So, doon muna tayo sa timeline. If I want to see, depende sa time interval, I can just go to my pivot chart analyze and then insert timeline. So, if I click insert timeline, you can see here meron siyang option. Yung date natin, if I check that and click OK, you can see meron siyang slider here. Okay, may timeline siya. So, let me hide this really quick. So, meron siya slider na merong date. Okay, this is relating to the data here. So, ibig sabihin, kapag nag-click ako dito, and I select, for example, April, it, you can see it responds. Yung data na naiwan dito sa ating chart ay data related sa April. So, for the period time period ng April, yun siya. Even our pivot uh, table to the left, it will show me the data sa April. If I click February, it will refresh. It will show me February na data. So, that is how it works. Depende sa ikiklik natin dito, magre-react siya. Again, um, if you send out your report, mas maganda, interactive siya. Now, um, to reset, to show yung lahat ulit, you can just click itong icon na to sa right, upper right, clear filter. If I click that, it will show me yung total for all the available data. Okay? If I want it to be broken down depende sa quarter, you can do that then. So, may meron tayong quarter 2, pwede yung quarter 1, pwede yan. Or, you can also show it by months or days. So, yan yung options natin. Pwedeng daily na volumes ang mag-appear. Mag um, in this case, you just have to scroll to the right. February 20, for example, ang gusto natin makita, e eh, weekend to, so wala siya. 21, weekend din. Pag click on 22, meron na siyang data. So, ganun siya. Um, Naka-timeline lang siya. You can spread it out like that. Now, let me unfilter that and go to months. Ngayon, this works for time, right? Pero as I said kanina, gusto ko malaman yung performance depende sa weekday. Depende sa week. Eh, hindi siya nag appear by default. This is where we can insert a slicer instead. Now, when you go to Pivot Table Analyze and click Insert Slicer, you can see lahat ng mga columns natin are available. Ibig sabihin, I can choose multiple or kahit isa lang. In, uh, in this case, gawin natin team by team. And then we show week and weekday. For example, ganyan, it will create tatlong slicer. Itong slicer na tatlong ito, it will allow me to further drill down yung ating data. So aside from our uh, timeline where I can select ko ano yung date, pwede kong iselect ko anong week yung gusto ko. Pwede ko rin select ko anong weekday yung gusto ko. Okay? So dito muna tayo sa ating team. So simply put, pagka nila, kinlik natin itong team, if I click team 2, you can see, isa na lang yung nag-appear na data kasi team 2 lang yung ating tinitingnan. Okay? So, you can use na sabay-sabay. For example, team 2 nung March, see, it responds. So, kahit sabay, meron kang filter sa timeline, meron kang filter sa slicer, okay lang yan. Pwede rin na um, within March na lang, week 10. Pwede rin yan. Now, if we just um, want to see yung original data, unclick lang natin yun. I-clear lang natin yung filter and it will respond. Ngayon, um, this week, itong week na to, depende yan, doon sa nilagay natin na week number, right? So, ganun siya. Ngayon, ano yung importance nito? Why are we even using slicers? Para saan to? Ngayon, ako, personally, I would share, based on experience, I relied heavily on data nung nasa point pa ako na I was leading a team. Kasi data is very neutral. When I explain na, oh, maybe may bandwidth ka pa, maybe we can take on more, a little bit more tasks or more responsibilities, mas maganda kung based sa actual data instead of yung subjective na observation. Hindi kasi madalas ka nagkakape or madalas ka kasi nasa nag-water break. Kasi pwede naman na Madalas siyang tumatayo pero dahil mabilis na siyang gumawa. Or madalas siyang tumayo dahil wala siyang volume na tatanggap on that day. There are many layers of complexities kapag nag-rely lang tayo sa observation ng mata natin or sa pakikisama or sa pagtatanong. So, a, a good uh, practice would be to rely on data when we make decisions sa company or sa teams natin. Para neutral, para hindi nakakasama ng loob. Okay? So, for example, just for the sake of um, uh, uh, showing kung paano siya. Uh, if for example, I click Monday. So, this is the performance of the four teams tuwing Monday. You can see itong team 3 ang baba ng performance sa tuwing Monday. 
bakit? Uh, low performing lang ba tong team? But if I click Thursday, wow, high performing yung team pag Thursday. So if I look at it like that, I can drill further and say, uh, team, bakit ganito? Pag, pag Monday, mababa yung performance yun. Pag Thursday, mataas yung performance yun. Ano ibig sabihin? Possible na tuwing Monday, sobrang dami ng volume nila, kaya nakaka-error. Or tuwing Monday, may meron silang katimit na laging absent. So, a lot of the people um, take on yung tasks niya. So, nahirapan sila, nagkaka-error sila. Pero pag Thursday, everyone's present, everyone's eager, mataas yung performance. So, again, it's very visual. So, hindi mo na kailangan na mag-rely on, your, on what you see or how you feel. Kasi you can show the data and say na, oh, what happens? Bakit pag Monday, ang baba ng performance, pag Thursday, okay kayo? O, oh, di ba? Tapos pag Friday, ayun na naman, mababa na naman. And then maybe we'll find out na, yun nga, may mga nag-sick leave tuwing Monday and Friday. May yung, merong mga tao na hindi talaga sila pwede on that shift. So, you can make calculated decisions based on neutral data. So, that is the beauty of using data to speak for the team. Para hindi tayo nagre-rely, doon lang sa nakikita ng mata or naramdaman ng ating mga puso. So, data will speak for itself. Another key thing about using slicers is, pwedeng hindi lang ikaw yung gumagamit ng data. So, for example, you send, this is data for the whole team and we send it out to all the managers. Maybe the manager ng team 1 is only interested sa team niya. Siyempre, probably. So, if they can click yung team 1 like that. So, yeah. So, it's a great way para when we make reports, hindi na one report version per person. You can just um, present yung ating data as is and then allow them to delve deeper and dig deeper kung ano yung exactly hinahanap nilang type of data. So, I hope I got you excited to study more about it and maybe try it out on your own sa inyong mga data. And um, let me know if you have any more questions or any concerns or comments, anything you want to cover. Let me know. We already have our playlist of Excel videos so you can explore that as well para makita nyo yung mga non-less na cover na natin. We have we are visible on TikTok as well. We have almost daily na lessons doon. And you can check that out. Again, Coach Hobby, you handle natin for all our social media. Check that out if you're interested. And I hope we can just all try to be better versions of ourselves. Or be better to, be better today than you were yesterday. And excel and excel together. And see you next